What if your dry eyes are just a symptom of a larger condition? In this episode of OcuTalk, optometrist Lisa Hornick tells us all about Sjogren syndrome, the diagnostic process, how it affects your eyes, and the options for treatment available. Hello, and welcome to OcuTalk. Today, we are here with optometrist Lisa Hornick. Doctor, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Well, we're very excited. Uh, to get us started, would you mind telling us a little bit about your background and your specialty? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in direct patient care for over 20 years now. I went to the Southern California College of Optometry and graduated in 2002. And I was a Navy optometrist. I went there on a Navy scholarship. So I was an active duty Navy optometrist for seven years. And I love my time in the Navy. Um, but then after that, I transferred into private practice. And I've been in private practice ever since. It was in 2014, so a little over 10 years that I've been mainly focused on dry eye disease and ocular surface disease and became very passionate about that. Um, I've been in sort of a process over the last 10 years of getting my dry eye practice bigger and bigger. And actually this year, for the first time, I'm 100% dry eye and ocular surface disease. So those are the only patients that I see now. And I just, I love it. It's where I'm most passionate about, and I feel like I'm making the most difference. Well, that's really wonderful. I know that dry eye is really prevalent right now. So um, for today's discussion, we were hoping you could discuss Sjogren's syndrome and how that affects the body and the eyes in particular. So I guess the first question would be, what is Sjogren's syndrome? So Sjogren's syndrome is an autoimmune disease. It's a chronic disease. It's multi-system. So in other words, it affects multiple different parts of the body. And it can occur alone, or it can be in conjunction with other autoimmune diseases as well. So things like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, or thyroid abnormalities. So what are the primary symptoms associated with Sjogren's syndrome? So it's mainly dryness of the eyes and then dryness of the mouth. So it affects the, there's an inflammation and a pathology that affects the lacrimal glands and also affects the salivary glands. So they're not functioning the way they're supposed to be. How common is Sjogren syndrome? Like, is there somebody more likely to be at risk of developing it? Absolutely. So it is fairly common. It's about um, 0.5 to 1% of the population. So that translates to about 400,000 uh, to about 3.1 million of Americans that can be affected by Sjogren's. And I've actually seen numbers of 4 million Americans that actually are affected by Sjogren's syndrome. Um, and there is sort of a stereotypical patient. So it's going to be um, the patient who is middle age. Symptoms usually start about 45 to 55 years old. And it's highly um, more likely in females than males. So there's actually a nine to one ratio of females having the disease versus males having the disease. So what actually causes Sjogren's syndrome? What's the root cause? So we're not actually sure what the exact cause is. We just know that it is an autoimmune disease and it primarily affects that salivary gland in the mouth and then the lacrimal gland affecting the eyes. How is it diagnosed? So the diagnosis is actually a little bit tricky. So when for eyes, you know, we're asking about symptoms primarily. We're asking about how do your eyes feel? Do your eyes feel dry? And if we get a yes, then we'll ask about their mouth. Do they have any um, issues, you know, oral issues or dental problems that are associated with dry mouth? But there's actually a certain criteria that was established by the American College of Rheumatology. So what they do is they do certain tests and then they give that test a score. So it's a, it's a weighted score. And once there's about five different criteria that they look at, and some are get a score of three and some get a score of one. So they're weighted more heavily than others. But if you add those up and you get a score of four or greater, and you have one of those symptoms of the dry eyes or the dry mouth, then they say that's a definitive diagnosis of Sjogren's. So... I found out that I have Sjogren syndrome. How specifically does that affect my eyes? Uh, my lacrimal gland is trying to work the way it's supposed to. So you, in the very beginning, you might have 
uh, more watery eyes. And then as time goes on, that will stop and that will be more dry. You can have some my brain gland dysfunction, which affects the oil glands in the eye. And actually things like um, fluctuations in vision. So if you don't have a nice clear ocular surface and it's not nice and smooth when you blink, then you're actually going to have fluctuations in blurry vision. You can also have light sensitivity. So all visible signs that, you know, our regular dry eye disease patients will have. But if you have that Sjogren's component, you're going to have those very similar symptoms as well. Okay, that makes sense. So if you don't mind to circle back, um, you mentioned some other tests and some pathology. So once I get my score, what does the process look like after I get my score before we can start treating it like it's Sjogren's syndrome? Yeah. So after you're definitely diagnosed, you're going to be seen by a variety of different providers, right? right? So you're going to see probably a rheumatologist. Uh, your dentist is going to be very helpful for you. Um, and then of course, your eye care provider, whether that be an optometrist or an ophthalmologist. And we're going to need to actually monitor those signs and symptoms much more frequently than we would our routine eye care patients. So we typically see our routine comprehensive exams about once a year, but I would recommend if you have Sjogren's that you definitely need to see a eye per care provider and your other um, you know, team of providers more frequently. So as, for example, in eye care, we might want to see you every six months or even every three months if you are more severe. So what does the treatment process look like for a patient with Sjogren's syndrome? So there's lots of different treatments, actually. We start treating you like we would a dry eye patient. So you have our mild, our moderate, and then our severe patients. And then we have different treatment options for those different categories. What we start with is are just simple things like environmental considerations. So you might need um, more hydration. So drinking more water, you know, we might and a humidifier for you, whether that be in your office or by your bedside at night. There's things called moisture chamber goggles. Some of our patients will actually sleep with their eyes open just a tiny bit. So if you have dry eyes and then your eyes are open a little bit at night, they're actually getting more dry. So in order to combat that, we do things that are called uh, moisture chamber goggles or a sleep mask at night, or even an ointment that you put in your eyes at night. You want to make sure the medications that you're using aren't making your eyes more dry. There's actually certain types of topical medications and systemic medications that can make your eyes more dry. So we educate you on that, making sure that you're using um, topical eye drops that are preservative. Sometimes the preservatives that are in eye drops can actually make your eyes more dry over time. So if you're using things like artificial tears to supplement your tears, you wanna make sure those are preservative free. Um, and then there's lots of different prescription medications that we can try. Uh, you want to make sure that your eyes are nice and clean. So that's something called lid hygiene. Lid hygiene is using um, eye-specific foams or cleansers that keep your ocular surface nice and clean. So you're not getting um, additional problems like uh, demodex blepharitis, which are actually little mites that live in your eyelashes and can cause more symptoms um, with dry eye or just simply bacterial infections. Um, there is special contact lenses that we can use called bandage contact lenses or scleral contact lenses are sometimes helpful for dry eyes when you're getting a little more severe. And we actually have in-office therapies. So something called intense pulse light, which helps to decrease inflammation in the eye. If you have um, meibomian gland dysfunction that is concurrent with your Sjogren's, then we're going to be wanting to use thermal pulsation to help kind of regenerate, not regenerate, but rejuvenate those meibomian glands, um, things like radiofrequency. So we have lots of different therapies, whether it's at home or whether it's in office that can help treat your dry eyes. In more severe patients, we do have some possible surgical interventions. We try not to get to that point, but for our more severe patients, we have more options too. So it sounds like there's a broad range of treatments depending on the severity of the symptoms. So does that mean that with the right combination of treatments, this can be cured? So it unfortunately can't be cured. Just like dry eye disease or any other autoimmune disease, there really isn't a cure, but we do have lots of different options that we can manage. So we manage symptoms and then we also frequently follow up to manage signs because we want to keep our patients in that more mild category. When we get to the severe stages, that's where it's much more 
to treat and much more difficult to manage. So we want to use preventive care, have you have frequent follow-ups and then treat you, you know, with those mi in those mild stages and hopefully you won't progress to get worse. But we, we do have lots of different treatment options. So are there any particular complications when it comes to the treatment options that patients should be aware of? Not necessarily complications when it comes to treatment options, but there can be other complications that can arise systemically from Sjogren's syndrome that affect other things besides the eyes um, and, and besides the mouth, like we already talked about. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it's sort of a multi-system disease and it can affect other organs such as the joints. It's often associated with rheumatoid arthritis and things like that. It can affect the skin, so dry skin. You can have um, lung disease or some lung effects from it. It can affect the nervous system and the GI tract. So some of the other symptoms besides the dry eye and the dry mouth that showrooms patients might experience are things like fatigue, you know, um, arthritis or decreased mobility, joint pain, and then kidney and lung disease and possibly dry skin and complications from that. So again, it's sort of a multi, multi-practice, uh, mo you know, different uh, modalities that we're going to, and different specialties that are going to be managing this disease at the same time. That sounds like a lot to manage all at once. <laughs> That's definitely sounds yeah. like a lot. It's a, it's a difficult um, condition for sure. Do you have um, one thing that you really emphasize then for your patients with Sjogren's syndrome? Um, just really, you know, getting those regular checkups and staying on top of it. Um, you know, making sure that if there are cha any changes and how the patient is feeling, that they get that prompt care um, and that, you know, we're able to help them as much as possible. Well, thank you very much today, doctor, for going over all of this with us. It has been really fascinating. Uh, I, I did not know a lot about Sjogren's syndrome coming in, so I think this will be really beneficial for all of our audience to get some more information on. Is there anything else you would like to let us all know before we wrap it up today? Yeah, just remember that, um, you know, if you have Sjogren's syndrome, that you're not alone. Um, if you are a provider for patients that have Sjogren's syndrome, just know that you know, we have so many more options now to treat our dry eye patients. Just within the last couple of years, there's been an explosion of new pharmaceuticals and new in-office therapies that we can use to help our patients that have been very successful. So just, you know, don't lose hope. And this area is evolving. We're always getting better and better. There's always more re research, new pharmaceuticals that are being developed. Uh, and new therapies. So don't lose hope uh, and know that you're not alone and there is someone that's going to be able to help you. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you.